Good evening, and welcome to Authors Alley. Tonight we will be speaking with F. Scott Fitzgerald, Flannery O'Connor, Tim O'Brien, and Louise Erdrich. Tonight we're with F. Scott Fitzgerald, author of Babylon Revisited and The Great Gatsby. Um, so when were you born and uh, tell us a little bit about your life. Well, I was born in 1896 in St. Paul, Minnesota. I grew up in an Irish Catholic, or Irish family. And we were Catholic, so a little rough in the beginning, but grew up pretty fine. Uh, when I was born, actually, I was named after a very famous author. I was named after Francis Scott Key. And the funny thing is, is Francis Scott Key is my second cousin, twice removed. So, it might have been three times removed. My parents never really told me, but it was one of those. Okay, and you're also known as the lingering symbol of this jazz age, and how does that tie into your work? Uh, the Jazz Age. Well, I did a lot of my writing during the Jazz Age, which was early on in the nineteen, in the late nineteen teens, after World War One, and the nineteen twenties, just before the Great Depression, which, as everyone knows, was murder for all of us. But I did a lot of writing in 1920, 1922, and in nineteen twenty-five, I came out with my greatest work, The Great Gatsby. And in that time, I fell in love with my beautiful wife. Zelda. And a couple of years later, we had a glorious kid, actually named after myself, Francis Scott, Scotty Fitzgerald. Can you tell us a little bit about your later life? My later life, uh, once the Great Depression hit, I moved out to Hollywood, California, hoping to find that I might be able to make it again as an author. But I, I couldn't let go of the jazz age that I grew up in, that I was writing and that I loved so much. So, as I continued writing, I continued drinking a little bit more and helped my alcoholism that I've had since college. And as I got older, I got a little more sickly and came down with tuberculosis. And at the age of 44, I passed away, leaving my wife and son. My son was only 19. Okay, thank you so much for your time. Good evening, we will be talking with the author Flannery O'Connor. She wrote the short story, Good Country People, and grew up in the South. Now, Miss O'Connor, could you tell us where you grew up and at what time? I was born in 1925 in coastal Savannah, Georgia, and we lived there for the first 13 years of my life. And then my family and I moved to Midgeville, Georgia. And I lived there until I graduated from college, and I went to the Georgia State College for Women. Um, and I used the home I lived in in Midgeville as my fictional home in my work. Uh, and as a child, I actually raised a chicken to walk backwards, and it was my first brush with fame. And I always say that was the most exciting time of my life, and it was all downhill from there. Now, as you were growing up, you said that you met a lot of grotesque people, and that has worked its way into your writing. People say you are known for that. Could you really tell more about that for us? Well, people from the North are going to think that anything from the South is grotesque. Um, and anything that actually is grotesque, people from the North call it realistic. So whenever people ask me um, why Southern writers wrote, write about freaks and whatnot, I say it's because Southerners can still recognize one. Now, growing up in the South, going back that a little bit, we know that you are Catholic. And in the area you grew up in, it was very Protestant. Could you tell us about any hardships or how that influenced you at all? Mm -hmm. um, I was one of two Catholics that uh, grew up in my area. Most of them were from, it was the Bible Belt, so a lot of people were Protestant. And in my writing, I you know, have a religious theme, uh, but I don't push it a lot. I wrote a lot for uh, 
two Catholic newspapers, actually. Um, and I wrote over 100 articles when I first started out. Thank you for your time. Good evening. Tonight we're here with Tim O'Brien, author of The Things They Carried, which included the story Night March. Mr. O'Brien, can you tell us about your early life prior to the Vietnam War? Well, I was born in 1946 in Austin, Minnesota. And around the age of 12, we moved to Worthington, Minnesota. So, I had a little time in both places. I grew up in Minnesota, so it was not, not that much to do, but I made as I went through school, I went through college, started to write, and I enjoyed it. And I graduated from Callister College in 1968, which is a funny thing. The same year that I was drafted for the Army. Go figure. Okay, and can you tell us about your involvement in the war and how it affected your work? My involvement in the war was I was in the Army from 1968 to 1970, but I was only in Vietnam from 69 to 70. I was a part of the unit that went through the Mailing My Lay Massacre, and that was about a year before I actually went over seats. So I got to that area and it was very hostile. I didn't understand why until one of the unit members turned to me and said, Hey, we're the we're the guys who uh, kinda messed things up around here. So after that I was like, Ugh So after nineteen seventy I was pulled out and shipped back home. And your writing style is known as a genre between fiction and reality. Why do you choose to do that? Well, I choose to do that because you really need to talk about the reality of Vietnam. I wanted to educate people on what was going on over there. Not at the time, but afterwards. They really didn't know what happened. They could see what the TV was telling them, what they heard on radio. This was actually one of the first wars that was televised in color. But uh, I just wanted to show the people what was going on and not just give them the cookie cutter, what they always got every day. I want to tell them the hardships that we went through. I started writing in 1973, only three years after I got out of the war. And I've been writing about it ever since. Actually, the book that we're talking about came out in 1990. And I just really wanted to tell that story and tell what happened. The real part is what went on, Actually, some of the people I mentioned, what the fictional is, changing around their names and some of the places that we were in, and giving people backstories and feelings. Okay, and can you just share with us one of your most favorite, qu uh, famous quotes? The most famous quote that I know of, people always say it to me, is though, though it is odd, you are never more alive than when you are almost dead. Okay, very interesting. Thank you so much. Good evening, and we will be talking with the author Luis Erdrich right now. She wrote many different novels and stories. Uh, the one story that we know her from is The Red Convertible. Miss Erdrich, where and when were you born? I was born in 1954, and I was born to German-American and Native American parents. And I'm actually a member of the Turtle Mountain uh, Band of Chippewa Indians in North Dakota. Um, and from an early age, my parents encouraged me to start writing, and I put together short stories, so it's kind of where I started out with my writing career. Uh, going along with your writing career, you said you wrote a lot in college. Uh, how did that affect you in some way? Um, well, I went to Dartmouth, and that's actually where I met my now late ex-husband. Uh, he was head of the Native American Studies Department there, and after I graduated, I actually joined him, and we co-authored some stories together. Now, you mentioned your late ex-husband. Um, how does that tie into your writing? Um, well, after college, we were co-authoring. We both wrote about our Native American heritage, just something we had in common. And then we actually went on um, to write stories about our adopted son. He was born with fetal alcohol syndrome. And so I wrote the story, The Broken Cord, about his struggle with the syndrome. and then. Most recently, I wrote a story about um, a Native American couple from different backgrounds and their struggle with divorce, and that's something I also went through when our, my husband and I had gotten a divorce. So I just try to write a lot about my personal life and my stories. 
Now, what other aspects of your personal life do you tie into your stories besides your divorce that you went through and the fetal alcoholism in your adopted son? Uh, definitely uh, my Native American heritage. Um, the story of the red convertible, one of the styles I used um, was to have a different narrator uh, throughout the book. So the red convertible was one story that was narrated and like in the end all the stories get tied together and they have kind of a, a tribal feel to it, like the Native American tribes, like you get a perspective from each person in the tribe. All right, thank you for your time, Ms. Sertrich. Thank you. This was Author's Alley. Thank you.